Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and Keystone has just released Bitcoin only firmware for their Keystone 3 Pro air gapped hardware wallet. So I'm going to show you how to get it downloaded and installed on your device so that you can configure your Keystone 3 Pro as a Bitcoin only hardware wallet. This is one of the most safe and secure ways for the serious Bitcoin hodler to store their Bitcoin long term. So let's check it out. So I'm here on the Keystone homepage. I'll give you a link to this down in the description so you can check out their products. I'm also going to provide you a direct link to the Bitcoin only firmware so that you can get it downloaded and installed on your device so that your device will be updated to the Bitcoin only firmware. So the idea of Bitcoin only firmware is that it is designed specifically for Bitcoin only, it does not include any multi-coin software. So it has a smaller attack surface for anyone that is trying to compromise it. So it is one of the most safe and secure ways of specifically storing Bitcoin. And when you couple that with the air gap Keystone 3 Pro, you've got a super safe and secure way of storing Bitcoin. There are lots of hardware wallets out there and soft wallets that support Bitcoin, and they're great for your day-to-day -day needs of maybe trading or transfers. But when you want to get serious about Bitcoin storage, you want to choose a device that is super safe, secure, open source, and specifically designed for hodling Bitcoin. So uh, I'm gonna show you how to get this set up. Now, before I show you how to update the firmware, there are a few things you might wanna take into consideration. First of all, uh, if you already have a Keystone 3 Pro device, which I do, and it's running multi-coin firmware, if you update the firmware to Bitcoin only, it cannot be reversed. So if you decide you want to update an existing device, then you want to make sure that you get the other cryptocurrencies off the device. Uh, it can be as simple as just moving it to a different wallet or to an exchange. But you'll want to get those other cryptos off if you're going to use this device as a Bitcoin only wallet. That's obvious, of course. If you wish to continue to use your Keystone 3 Pro multi coin device, then my suggestion is to get a brand new device for your Bitcoin only hodling. I know that's a little expensive but it's worth it for hodling your long-term Bitcoin holdings. I will quickly go ahead and get this device unboxed and set up. Um, I'm gonna skip most of the details because I already have a full setup video for the Keystone 3 Pro, which I'll leave a link to up in the corner there and uh, you'll see it down in the description. I have a charging brick over here that I'm using to charge my device. I just want you to be aware that this is just a charging cable. It's not connected to anything. Uh, you want to keep this set up offline as much as possible. All right. So we'll go ahead and get started here. I'll choose English. They're going to ask me to do the uh, device verification, which we do on their website. Uh, they have a link here. All right, so uh, we'll tap scan QR code and then we'll just lift our camera up to this QR code and let it scan. All right, and then it's going to give you a verification code. All right, so we'll just uh, type that in here and we'll go ahead and click verify and the verification step is complete. Once we've done that, we can verify on the device also, and uh, we're ready to do that firmware update. The instructions are to go ahead and go to the website, download the firmware onto a micro SD card, and then tap update to continue. Now, in order to do this, you're going to need a micro SD card which is uh, about this size here, uh, a little smaller than uh, the normal SD card that you might have for a camera or something like that. 
Um, you can pick these up on Amazon on the cheap. And in my case, I'm going to need an SD card reader, uh, which will plug into the USB port on my computer. Now, some laptops might have a slot for a micro SD card. It's more common that a laptop will have a slot for a regular size SD card, and you might not, you might need to get an adapter. Uh, but uh, a micro SD to regular SD adapter is also pretty cheap. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, insert the card into my reader, and then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, put this in my computer, get it formatted, and download the firmware. All right, so I will put the reader in my desktop. Get that part done. Okay, Windows launched a uh, folder window. And uh, as you can see, I already have uh, a previous version of the firmware on here. I'm gonna go ahead and format this drive. It's in uh, drive F, so I can just go down here and right click and choose format. You wanna make sure you use FAT32. Uh, do not use NTFS because after, if you use this format, the uh, Keystone 3 Pro device will not be able to read the SD card. So you want to make sure you use FAT32. Go ahead and get that formatted. Everything's good there. All right, and now uh, we'll go ahead and download the firmware update. Now there are two versions of this. Uh, if you already have the Multicoin firmware on your device, and uh, you want to upgrade it to Bitcoin only, you would download this version. Or you have a previous device that's running uh, Bitcoin only firmware, you would download this one. All right, and they mentioned there that if you download the firmware for the Multicoin transfer to Bitcoin only, it, will, uh, it cannot revert. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and click I understand. Uh, we can just drop this right on our drive. So we'll go ahead and click save here. All right, so now that we've got the firmware update downloaded and on our SD card, let's proceed with the next step. Go ahead and get this out and take out the SD card. So the SD card fits in the side over here and it will only go in one orientation, right? It's shaped so that it only goes in one direction. So if you feel any resistance, just uh, stop. And then uh, once it's in, you wanna push it all the way down so you hear a click. And once the uh, SD card has uh, been inserted, go ahead and tap update. It's going to run that update. All right, you'll see it go black and restart and then you'll have the progress bar. This might take uh, 10 or 15 minutes, so be patient. All right, once the uh, progress bar finishes, it's going to reboot. We'll go ahead and skip over that. All right, and now we can create a brand new wallet. Uh, set your pin phrase. You can give the wallet a name. Call it whatever you'd like, whatever makes sense for you. Um, you have the option of using a Shamir backup. I'm going to stick to the standard seed phrase. All right, you want to make sure no one sees you while you're doing this. Once you've written down that seed phrase, you can advance to the next screen. It's going to show you the words again, uh, but this time they'll be in the wrong order, so you'll want to tap each word in the list in order. After you've typed all those words in order, it will go ahead and initialize your wallet, and there we go. So notice that it doesn't have the separate coins like it did previously. Um, it just has send and receive because there's only one way to do this, and that's Bitcoin. Uh, now, uh, let's go ahead and fund the wallet if we tap receive. It's going to tell you that it's only for Bitcoin and we can uh, send Bitcoin to this address. We'll need to use a software wallet with this device and we'll tap the three dots up here and go to connect software wallet. They have several options here uh, for Bitcoin only wallets. I'm gonna go ahead and use the nunchuck option here. It wants me to scan it with my nunchuck wallet now, I already have the Nunchuck wallet on my device. All right, and you can see I'm already managing a few other wallets. All I have to do is uh, add a new key 
and I'll tap air gap key. I'll continue. We'll call this one Keystone. All right, and then I'll use the scan option, which will open up the camera and allow me to scan the QR code of my device. All right, they've got a couple of derivation paths that you can use. Uh, all you have to remember is to use the same one the next time. I'll just use the first one in the list. All right, and then we'll go ahead and add that key. All right, now that we've got the key set up, you can see it here in my list of keys. I'll go ahead and start a new wallet. We'll call this one Keystone. We'll continue. And then we'll just associate the key with our device and we're good to go. And uh, it gives us an overview of the type of wallet we're creating. Now they give you the option of saving this BSMS file which can be used to recover the exact same wallet, but you could also just set up the wallet fresh uh, based on the device like we just did. Uh, so it's up to you how important this is to you. I guess you could send it to yourself if you wanted to. This does not contain any private information for the wallet or any access for the wallet. It's just a convenience that would allow you to easily restore this wallet. Um, on your phone if something if you got a new phone or something all right and once you've done that uh, you're finished you got the wallet set up and now you've got your uh, wallet ready to go you can see your balance up here and then you've got a receiving address which you can share or copy into your clipboard if you want to uh, transfer some bitcoin into this wallet all right, there are a lot of ways to fund this wallet. I'm just gonna do the most straightforward, which is just transfer some crypto from an exchange to my wallet. I'll go ahead and use my Coinbase account. All right, I have some Bitcoin in my Coinbase account. So uh, I'm just gonna do a send. Coinbase refers to this as a withdrawal. So uh, we'll just go over to our wallet, uh, copy that address into our clipboard. Go back over to Coinbase and just do a withdrawal. We'll paste in the address of our wallet. We'll hit continue. You'll want to do a small test transfer. Um, I'm, I just have a small amount in my account right now. I'll just go ahead and transfer that over. Uh, but please don't transfer huge amounts uh, unless you've double checked everything. Um, especially if you're doing a new wallet for the first time. All right, let's hit send. Okay, and so we've just sent the Bitcoin out and then uh, we'll check the wallet for that incoming transaction. All right, and you can see that the transaction has hit the wallet and uh, it's showing up. Now, uh, when it says pending, it means that it needs to totally confirm on the blockchain. The, the uh, Bitcoin has arrived in the wallet. It's safe and secure in the wallet, but we cannot send it back out yet uh, until it is fully confirmed on the blockchain and becomes what they call spendable. All right, now that my Bitcoin transaction has been fully confirmed on my device, I'm gonna go ahead and send it back to Coinbase, right? We wanna test this wallet out. I need a destination, so I'll go back over to Coinbase, and this time I'll choose Deposit. I'll grab that Bitcoin address of my Coinbase account. I'll go back over to the wallet, and this time we'll do a send. Uh, I'm gonna just send part of it, The address I can simply paste because I pulled that on over from Coinbase. All right, now I need to sign the transaction. This is where the air gap security comes into play. I'll choose sign and I'll choose export transaction and I'll choose buy QR code. All right, there's the uh, request for uh, confirmation. And so what I'm going to do is confirm it using the private keys, which are stored offline on this device. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, disconnect this because we've got it charged 100% now, just to demonstrate so there's no misunderstanding that this is a completely air gap solution, is not connected to anything. I'll choose scan and, that w and I'll scan that transaction into my hardware device. This is basically a request 
to uh, send out the cryptocurrency. Notice the private key is the only way to do this, right? So the private key is on the device, and I have control of the device. I will look over the transaction, uh, and then uh, I can confirm by sliding across this way. I'll go ahead and enter my passcode. All right, and then uh, the device will generate the authorization. All right. Now the app needs to read the authorization in order to send, uh, in order to authorize the outgoing transaction. So I'll tap import signature, and the camera opens up. I'll scan in that authorization code. All right. And now that I have the authorization code, I can choose broadcast transaction and out it goes. That is the most basic test that you can perform on a Bitcoin wallet. Do an incoming and then an outgoing transaction. All right. And we can see over on my Coinbase account that uh, that Bitcoin from the wallet has uh, come in. So I hope you enjoyed the video. It's not that difficult to get the uh, Bitcoin only firmware downloaded and installed on your device. And uh, once you have that done, you've got one of the most safe and secure ways of long term Bitcoin storage on your device. If you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.